Welcome to Edify by the Word. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Episode 3, The World Loves Recession. Now, I say that because I was just recently employed, the beginning of this month, September of 2024, after spending a few months unemployed looking for work, and by the grace of the Lord, as well as instructing me to make pr- provision for... <laughs> well, days of want, we've been brought through, and much provision has been made, whether through side jobs, gifts, generosity, I mean, even just the opportunity to share a meal with somebody, especially somebody who's about my age, well, that's a blessing unto itself. Because after all, I would say that us of the younger generations, Millennial and Z, and hopefully not Alpha, have been quite lonely for very terrible reasons. But yes, the world loves recession. and Why? Because the world loves mammon. And the love of mammon, the love of, or the love of money as people call it, but really it's the love of mammon, of worldly, of earthly, of temporary wealth, is not only the root of all kinds of evil, but is a part of the broad way to destruction. And what do I mean by the world loves recession? Because I thought a recession was an economic phenomenon that happens in cycles and yada yada yada. Well, come on now. If we just look at our current century alone, we have yet to stop being in a recession. And yes, even during 2016 through 20, well, in case you didn't notice, inflation still went up, the debt still climbed, even before 2020 itself. We still had a number of issues revolving around covetousness and avarice, a neglect of the family, of our education, and people would say, our, yes, our mental health. Well, when you, when you don't consider the way, the truth, and the life, All matters of health will decline. No less our financial health. Before I get into some backstory, the theme passage for this is Psalm 40. Open it with the first four verses. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Let me repeat verse 4. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and what does that mean? Part of making the Lord his trust is what? Respecteth not the proud. You don't care about who is boasting, jeering, and just showing off their wealth. In case you haven't noticed, people, money, wealth, whether it be the form of form of form of form of gold, silver digital, intellectual property. Well, it comes, it goes, it can be taken away. That should be a grand lesson for 2020. I don't understand how many times. There's a, there's even a, some gurus. I just call them gurus. Now, to be fair, they are uh, technically legitimate businessmen, investors, and real estate agents that are giving overall honest assessments of the state of our of our economy, the future of our overall finances, and yet what is their fixation? Well, if you partner with them together, there's a lot of money to be made. It's quite shocking really. <laughs> yes, even I'm talking about something well off, well to do, and once again credible businessmen, 
here in the state of Arizona. And yet their fixation is weathering this through for next, according to them, only 9 to 16 months and making more money. respecteth not the crowd, nor such as turn aside to lies. I don't care what your side is in regards to Democrat, Republican, left ring, right ring, red or blue. To me, it's just the fast way and the slow way, because neither are the narrow way. Neither advocate trust in the Lord. For what? Verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. And let me tell you something. When I resigned from my teaching position at a rural, small, private Christian school, I did so out of conviction in my heart because they were endorsing Roman Catholic dogma and secular humanists along with psychological paradigms in direct opposition to the, to the word of the Lord. And so by extent, advocating for ecumenism. Babylon 2.0 And I would have no part in it. And the Lord heard my cry. It gave me a way out. And I'm, that's the thing. The way out wasn't, oh, well, if you go, if you leave, then you can go immediately into a more prestigious, accommodating, financially well off. No. He heard my cry and he gave me peace. He gave me peace and he guided my steps. Verse 2 He brought me up also out of the end horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. And established my goings, and since then he's been. I've been at peace. I've drawn closer to my wife, my family, in many ways, the church body, amongst others. And I intend to maintain that trajectory. And he has shown that he's faithful. Verse 3 And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. He's put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. I want to tell you something, and not to show you that, look at me, I am such a holy saint. No. Because I know where my peace, where my joy, where my hope lies. And this is going to look the same for everybody. But you know in your heart of hearts, what the Lord requires of you. For me, I had the opportunity for a tutoring position that is, has a, a lucrative contract with the Arizona Department of Education here, right here in town. Easy commute, good amount of money. No benefits, but still, good amount of money, part time. But alas, when it comes to public education, no less here with this private sector position. When you read between the lines, I will be compensated as long as I refuse to sing the new song, to not praise the Lord unto the students, unto the young people, unto these junior hires in particular that I would have been serving. If anything, I didn't have to teach them directly certain lies. But I couldn't speak against them either. I'm no hireling. I'm no mercenary. I'm not going to shut my mouth for filthy lucre. For, for uh, monopoly funds. As far as I'm concerned, the Lord indeed has opened doors. And as we speak, I am quite well, even financially. We are good into the following month. 
Blessed is that man that makes the Lord his trust. Meaning what? I respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. There's been plenty of lies, my dear brethren. The world loves recession. Think about this. The abundance and material goods that we have now is based on debt, credit, Stretching the dollar, stretching our assets, stretching our labor beyond its limits. You go back literally a hundred years. 1924, also known as the Roaring Twenties. What happened in 1929, five years later? The stock market crash, the beginning of the Great Depression. And it's quite something when you look at historical documentaries about the Depression, about what caused it. It's touted, it's proudly spoken of because we still do it to this day, only more refined and it's quite the science. Well, not so much anymore. We kind of just patch it over with all kinds of schemes. And that is the credit system. Lying to men that you can spend beyond your means, that you can acquire wealth with nothing, cash, value out of thin air, pay it back later. And that's what started all people. See, they just got really good at patching over, at preventing the pops of a depression. So, but we've had ongoing recessions over and over again since then. So really, we're just tempting the Lord to finally just release his mercy. <laughs> release his mercy upon us. And that bubble will go boom. Worse than the crash of 29. Trust in the Lord. Respect is not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. I'm living a simpler, more week by week life. If anything, I'm more alive now because, well, I appreciate things people, husbands, love your life, sorry, love your life, well, how do you love your life, I misspoke, but let's go on with this, because this plays into the next couple of verses, love your life by denying yourself, for did not Christ deny himself unto death on the cross, in love of us? His church. So husbands, if you love your life, you'll deny it. So then you can love your wife. For Christ will give you life. And he will give life to your wife through you. For that is the way of the Lord. Verse 5 and 6. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. To us word meaning for our benefit. Sacrificial, generous to us. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And that's the problem. That's the problem, people. That is among the, the pride and the lies that we have. As long as the economy is not doing good, a.k.a. if not inflated, because that's the thing, in order to have the great material buns that we have, we have to maintain debt. We have to maintain constant inflation and thereby the looming phantom that haunts us, if not curses us, of recession but we ignore it to our peril. 
and thus our families, our schools, our churches, our workplaces, everything suffers for it. Why? Because it's all about the money. It's all about the hamster wheel. It's all about the race. It's all about getting what's yours because you deserve it. Imagine that. Think about that lie, that scheme. You should have the life you want, which involves what? Dollars. Because you deserve it. Imagine that. The promise that everybody can get what they want. But instead, second half of verse 5, they, as in the works of the world, the wonderful works of the Lord cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Listen carefully to verse 6. This is what I'm talking about. What we're really missing. What we more so had, especially in our hearts in abundance, before 1924. Just as a normalcy of culture, of the heart of of our forefathers. Verse 6, Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. So the Lord doesn't want the material sacrifice and offerings just for the sake of them. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Now that's the thing. Yes. It was a command unto his people, the Israelites, but it was unfortunately in formality because of what? Their stubbornness, their stick necked hearts. The Lord wanted, because remember, when you did the sacrifice, there's two major elements that people always overlook. A, you're coming into the presence of the Lord. B, You're doing it together as a household, if not extended family. And that included manservants and woman servants. And that's generally who enjoy the fruit of the sacrifice in the meal, in the presence of the Lord. Verse, first half of verse five, many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done and thy thoughts, which are to us word the purpose of the sacrifice of the offerings was to bless us to forgive our sins bestow grace upon us and bless us our spirits our hearts our minds and our bodies together and as one of the blessings indeed of this time is the fellowship I've had. The extension to that family, friends, and neighbors. And that I try to be wary of when I indeed look for work is what jobs, what labor will rob me of fellowship. So the ability to be in the presence of the Lord my fellow man, if not perhaps will grant me more money, but not the time of which to give and sacrifice generously unto them as he has done unto me. For sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened. I hear you, Lord, understand. Burnt offerings and sin offering hast thou not required, and that has been fulfilled by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. And that's the thing. This is what we're talking about, our life, our legacy. This is what I desire. This is what the Lord has put in my heart. Because this is hope. This is joy. This is peace. This is community, this is unity with his spirit and those of my blood, if not more so, of like spirit in him, my fellow brethren. 
So may be written of me, may my writings, may my what's written of me and may my writings, may what I teach, may what I preach, may what I may be made known above all. Verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law. So not my will, O Lord. But your will be done. The very words of Jesus Christ. At the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion. Not my will, but O oh, yours be done. Christ, the fulfillment of the law, the way of the Lord, the righteousness of the Lord. Thy law is within my heart. It is not a burden. It is not tyranny. If indeed, if anything, it gives me strength, courage. It is a stronghold. So I may be steadfast in this world and not be afraid of the lack of mammon. But I fear, well, the lack of this, verse 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. And like I said, I will not take a job that tells me whether it be a so-called Christian ministry or otherwise. It says, you will be well compensated. We will be generous to you. We will support you, but you must remain silent. You don't have to speak of li our lies. You don't have to boast like us. But you can't tell the truth. Well, I'm sorry. But the truth is what sets a man free. And I am free indeed. And I will not restrain that from my fellow men. I will speak freely. If they don't want to hear it, fine. But otherwise, the word shall come. They will flow from my lips. For faith, my dear brethren, comes with a life walking in his law, walking in his ways, walking in, in the light amidst the darkness. And the more you experience it, the more you witness his wonderful work, even the small things, yes, the small things, spending time with your wife, you and your wife spending time with neighbors or you spending time with a friend with a brother encouraging one another to fight the good fight and finish the race oh that alone is wonderful work and that's only made more apparent by the darkness by the death by the despair that we see all around us the world loves recession for it's not just the lack of money, not just the poorness of economy, but it's also the bankruptcy of our souls, the lack of blood within our hearts, the absence of thought in our mind, the poor health of our bodies. But I suffer none of those things. In the meantime, I shall be grateful and I will serve him and I will be ready for him to call me to the next thing. For my life is not mine, but is his. For freely he gave and so freely I will do his will. Especially when it says what? Verse 9, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. And I will definitely speak unto the brethren. For after all, I don't know how much longer I have in this world. None of us does. But I do hope and pray, especially if you are of the younger generations, that you surpass me in faith. And let me tell you something. It's possible. I imagine myself, well, a decade ago, when I was 23, and I thought to myself, how can I have the faith that people just do and just let the Lord work? I knew it was possible. And sadly, 
I say it took me longer than it should have. So for those of you in your teens and your 20s, surpass me. Verse 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Which means what? You don't respect the proud and you don't turn aside to lies. Do that sooner than I have. Open the word. Let him speak to you. and Keep your eyes and ears open to what men really say and do. And you will find that the Lord is not a liar. Verse 10, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. For that is what we are lacking within the body of Christ. Or sadly, those who call themselves members of the body of Christ and houses and fellowships that are indeed not of the body of Christ. Or perhaps there are those of us who are of the body of Christ. And yet, our love, our love has grown so cold, and we've grown fearful, confused. Because what? Verse 1, we did not wait patiently for the Lord. And don't tell me that you did. Be honest with yourself. Don't tell me he didn't provide. Be honest with yourself. Verse 5, many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. To us word. His work. For his glory. But indeed it blesses us, it benefits us, it enriches us. True enrichment. <laughs> Unlike our cultural enrich enrichment, whether it be domestic or, or foreign. I have not, verse 10, I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Let it be known. Let it be known. For even amongst those of conservative slash traditional, reformed, what, whatever it may be, circles, there's a lack of appreciation of gratitude for even the presence of our family. or even a, a morsel of bread, a cup of clean, pure water. For the very beds that we lay on, the shoes on our feet, the wind on our face, the, sound of, the sounds of birds, your pet showing you attention, just life in itself. And the access that we have to so much to know, to understand, And why? Because the world loves recession. The world loves mammon. And thus it loves death. Are you? Are you a lover of recession? Do you prefer a lifestyle of debt, of credit, of usury, living on borrowed time, living on false promises, living on hope for a better paycheck, for more of the same thing, Democrat or Republican people. If you look back 100 years before 1924, before the Roaring Twenties, even during the time but definitely before then. Suicide was down. Depression was down. And back during that time, the average American resisted sending their, their, their kids to public school. Why? Because they taught reading, writing, arithmetic, and skills, labor, community, home, Neighborly community economies that thrived 
that survived, that found joy even in the times of lack. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Boomer, Millennial, X, sorry, I forgot about you. Z, do you love recession? You can't sleep at night because you're losing the wealth, the riches of our land. <laughs> Who needs it? A hundred plus years ago, no one dared invade the United States of, of America. We were in a world economic superpower. <laughs> Our standing army was actually little to none. Really no navy to speak of. Air force wasn't in existence. But no one dared invade the United States. Because that's the thing. We were people. People more knowledgeable, more convicted by the word. And thus, even barefoot in the dirt, even living in our small homes, even we're living day to day in the cities, which were a lot cleaner back then. As a whole, there were definitely exceptional places, like like you know, like in all urban areas. But alas, aside from the wicked. Aside from the sodomite, aside from the man that would trade blood for any personal gain, there was peace, there was hope, there was strength. There was the will to live, the will to sacrifice, the will to love, the will to give, even when there wasn't much to give. So, do you trust in the Lord or do you love recession like the world? Turning aside to lies. Endorsing the proud who now parade themselves on the streets in gay colors. Verse 11 and 12. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart Faileth me. We're going to be talking about two different enemies. Here's the first our flesh, ourselves. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me. O Lord, let thy loving kindness and, and thy truth, thy loving kindness and thy truth. There's a stupid debate on is it love or is it truth? It's both. You can't love people, you don't tell the truth, and if it's true, well, then you're gonna love. So, if you're lacking one or the other, then guess what? Your love is fake, or your truth is fake. It's both. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Not my own efforts, not the government, not the police. Not the financial or educational institutions. And not my parents, especially if you're a grown man. But let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. And you gotta receive that kindness and you gotta know and understand the truth. And that's what? You gotta walk accordingly to it. A gift is only a value. If it's not only accepted, but used properly. And why this? Why this? 
before we start feeling sorry for ourselves and blame everybody. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore my heart faileth me. Before you take a good look at the world, yes, the world loves recession. But I, I asked you the question. I asked myself the question. Do I love recession? When it's all said and done, do I love mammon? Do I love to linger on the Broadway every so often? Perhaps that is indeed why at times my heart fails. I go into despair. I have poor mental health issues. And that's the thing. Or perhaps we're in a situation that afflicts us, but rather than trust, we stay in it because, well, we're more fear afraid. We fear more the loss of mammon, the loss of our safety and our security. And so then we allow evil, abuse, oppression to be committed against us. Because that is better than trusting in the Lord. Verse 13, be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. To help. But once again, you got to accept the help. On his terms. Because remember, verse 11, let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually pre preserve me. So don't kid yourself. You're thinking, that, okay, pull, cool. He pulled me out of the pit. Now I can do whatever I want. Well, let me dare say, you're playing with uh, a dangerous place. And you're playing with a path to, to hell. Don't know where you are in your walk with the Lord, but I wouldn't play with paths to hell. Just saying. But if we're going to actually receive the help, verse 14, 15, let them be ashamed and confounded, confused, distraught. They don't know what to do. Guess what? The world doesn't know what to do in general. So you don't have to be able to share in that. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. I have a number of enemies, and they, and they will likely grow in number and ferocity as time passes. But they have little effect on me currently, especially because I'm outside of the, the realm of their influence. And they, and they say, well, what can you do without us? Oh, I trust in the Lord. And thus, I have a new song to sing. Verse 15, let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, aha, aha, laughing mockingly. And that's the thing. That is what every man shall reap. You think these people who have so much, who've lied, stolen, cheated, or just endured humiliation. People who have allowed themselves to be ridiculed, be slandered, be treated like garbage, all for the sake of recession, for the benefits of being in a world of debt and credit, the bankruptcy of, of the heart, the mind, and the soul. You think they're winning? Now let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, ha ha. If that's what they're going to choose, well, it's better for them to indeed uh, face some hard times now to wake them up for the hard time of eternity. Stay away from places that are on a pathway to hell. Verse 16 and 17. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation 
say continually, The Lord be magnified. Such as love thy salvation. Why? Because here's the thing. None of us are good people. I thought you were supposed to be holy. Yes. Holy means set apart unto the Lord to do his good work. Holy means ready to receive his mercy and his grace. Why? Because the law is in our heart. Not my will, O Lord, but yours be done. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving us from our sin, from death, from deception. For the wage of sin is death. And, on, and in that, on that path, on that trajectory, in that state of death, there's deception. Thank you for saving me from that. The Lord be magnified. Once again, that is my song. That is my message. That is the very heart of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Lord be magnified. Verse 17, But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying. Oh my God. I am poor and needy. Here's a fun fact. Even if you aren't living paycheck to, to, to paycheck, don't refuse to be poor in spirit. Don't refuse to be humble, to be meek. For after all, verse 12, they are more than the hairs of my head. What your sin, the evil acts that you commit, your thoughts, your words. Therefore, my heart faileth me. And there's also the evil the world commits against you as well. So thus, in your heart, say, but I am poor and needy, and know it. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thinketh upon me as his intentions for our well-being, for the blessings and benefit of his children. In what? What does this mean? Thou art my help and my deliverer. Thou art my help and my deliverer. And it's all said and done. Whether it's quote-unquote good times or supposedly bad times or one or the other, doesn't matter. Our thoughts our hearts, our feelings are, thou art my help and my deliverer, my help in much and less, deliverer of my own sin or, or the evils of men. Make no tarrying, O oh my God. Do not delay. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to do your will. Oh my God, because when the Lord comes to help and deliver, our response is, not my will, but oh Lord, my God, yours be done. The world loves recession. Do you love his loving kindness and the truth that continually preserves those who trust in him? This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.